I'm David Griffin, it's the 24th of October 2018 and I'm here at Matlock Cricket Club in the heart of the Derbyshire Dales and I'm joined by four stalwarts of this wonderful cricket club. Uh, if you could just introduce yourselves please gents. David Ramsden, past captain. Thank you. Daryl, past captain. Thank you. Peter Stapleton, current vice chairman. Thank you. Roger Young, uh, current chairman and a past captain as well. Thank you. So we're in the presence of some senior people from uh, Matlock clearly. My opening question really is, we're in this beautiful setting, how long has cricket been played in this town or on this particular ground? Well we believe it originated around 1870, 1880, there are no precise records but it's clear from the information we have that cricket was played here um, under the auspices of Rathlock Cricket Club. Um, the club itself though, at that time and indeed uh, into the last century played uh, auto-friendly cricket primarily at weekends. And it was only when the club joined the Knotts, what was the former Knotts and Derbyshire Buddy League in 1965, it joined an actual competitive league for weekend cricket. Just before we go back to those beginnings, 1965 Border League, because you're quite a way away from the border, aren't you? So that you're probably one of the further west sides. What was the background to the joining of, of the Border League? Well, it was either join the Border League or, or the, one of the Yorkshire Leagues. Right. And uh, I don't know, there was a lot of discussion and the thought that because we were Derbyshire, yeah. we'd try and persuade the Southern Derbyshire teams that we were good enough to play. Yeah, because the Border League was a very good standard. Yeah, wasn't it? Mm, yeah. in those days it was the best standard in, in the county. Yes. I mean, because there was no Derbyshire County League in those days. Yeah. But it was not uh, and Derbyshire. Yeah. It was not and Derbyshire Border League, yes. Uh, and indeed, the juniors uh, still go under that name. Yes. Um, we, our junior teams are members of the Knox and Darby Border League. Yes. So yes. So can we just we we'll start with Dave? What when did your association start with Matlock Cricket Club? 1950. Right, as a you, you presume as was a very young man. Yes. <laughs> My father came to be a clerk who worked at Matlock to build the first farm estate. Right. And uh, I just wandered down and knocked the ball about and, and just joined I, 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 we'd come from a, a cricket map place in Yorkshire, Thornhill near Dewsbury right. and I just wandered down here and started playing. And what was it like in those days? Was it just one team with any junior teams? Or no, was there was it just one restricted? team and uh, they were mostly schoolmasters and solicitors yeah. and it was when the Smedders Hydro was in full swing and people used to come to the hydro and then said they wanted to play cricket so they used to wander down here and the local, right. the local man used to have to drop out for one of these rich people to right. come and play. What about you Clary, when did you first start to play? I don't know to be honest. Right. <laughs> I, I'd, uh, I played in the early cricket where there was uh, Holford and Colliery oh, right. and Blackhall Colliery yeah. and I got friendly with Dave and one or two more uh, going to the dams in Matlock on a Saturday night and I started playing <laughs> playing the odd friendly on a Sunday with them. Yeah. And then they, they, they talked about starting a second team. And there was some somebody said you'll never do it. And then somebody said to me, Well you I took it, I said, well, that was just sort of challenge I wanted. Right. And uh, I got the second team going and uh, I played for 14 seasons and then I used to miss the game. Really? Oh. And uh, it was quite a job at times. But, uh, I, I used contacts from all over, some in Nottingham, some in Derby. Yeah. Uh, but I always managed to get a team out. So were you working at the Collier then? When you, when you, when you, you no. say you were at Alfredton at Blackwell? No, I, used, I did work at Alfredton when I was working for a rep for a mining company at the right. time. Excellent. Peter, when was your first game of cricket here? Then? Oh, first game of cricket, it would be approximately 1970. So you were a youngster then, compared to yeah, these, these, these chaps. I'm a youngster, <laughs> yes. They were playing in the austere days oh, of rationing. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. What Clary was just saying, though, did bring me back to what we were discussing uh, earlier, and that was the commitment to play cricket in those days yep. compared with what it is today and there Clary ran the second team for 14 years never missed a match yeah so 
he didn't have holidays in the cricket season mm. or go to weddings and things like that. But it just took me back to... What and that is a cultural it. challenge, isn't yeah, it? it? A is. social change that yeah. I guess you have to manage yes. within your clubs. Yes, we do. That's yeah. right. Yeah, we're, we're not alone. I mean, it's the same... Oh, I'll interrupt you. There's one thing I, I forgot to say. I thought I was about the only captain who'd ever sent a player off. Was it part of the evil? Well, well, did you send your? Is it clean? Can you tell us why you sent your player off? Well, I won't tell you the words I used, but (laughs) (laughs) it was one thing really beast, and he was he was a character and uh, a good cricketer, but uh, he refused to bowl at the Goldsway Lane, and he was only going to bowl at the other. So I said, well, you either bowl at the Goldsway Lane, or you get off the field. Yeah. So the next thing he went, he didn't even bother to change. He, gra- he grabbed his, his toes, he was, he was off up that hillside. And <laughs> well, don't forget, it happened to an England fast bowler because Brian Bowles did the same to Alan Ward at Chesterfield. Yeah. Sent him off for refusing to bowl. Mm. So, no, no, sorry yeah. about that. No, no, you're quite a beta, so we were yeah, we, you know, batsman nine, bowler. Batsman. Right. Uh, about 1970, as I say, uh, was the, in the first year. Uh, I mean, to come to Matlock, I was playing cricket for teams around the Ripley area. Right. Um, and then we happened to be practicing in the winter up at uh, Lee Green. Yep. Uh, and uh, Matlock had a net up there, and in the next net were Morton, and I was playing with Morton at that time. Yep. And of course, Clary was there. We'd grown up together in the same village, Clary and I. Right. So, uh, of course, it's, what are you doing now? Who are you playing for? Yeah. Why don't you come and play for Matlock, you see? Yeah. And so I did. And that was, uh, say, 1970. Um, but uh, it's a long time ago. Absolutely. Long time ago. Uh, and Roger, your first connection with Matlock cricket was when? Uh, in 1984. Right. Um, I'd moved into the area at the end of 83 uh, to a new job. Uh, we actually moved house in March 84 and I asked somebody up at County, what is now County Hall, I had no idea what the local setups were and he mentioned Matlock, though he hadn't actually played for them. Ironically I actually live in Dale. I'm quite close to right. their ground but right. that didn't mean anything to me at the time. Yeah. But um, I came along as a captain at the time of the second eleventh, a gentleman who is still around called Rod Twyford and I played that season um, and then the rest is history so they say. Uh, before that, though, I'm from Stockport originally. Yep. I played for a club called what was then heavily Sunday School Cricket Club in the former High Peak Cricket League, and I played in the senior team from when I was 12. Uh, before that, I was the scorer for their second team. They then had a junior team as well after I joined the club. Um, that's the only time I've ever won anything with the league <laughs> and the cup, ironically, in all these years. But um, I moved from heavily to another team called Stockport Parish in the North Cheshire Cricket Federation in the mid-70s. Sadly, that club no longer exists, neither does Heavily. And latterly, before we left Stockport, um, in the early 80s, I played for Cheadle Hume Ladybridge, which still does exist, and I think they're in the Cheshire Cricket Conference or something of that sort. I then, um, Susan, my wife, and I had three years living in Ipswich in Suffolk, when I first went to my uh, later employer, and um, played for a team called Copdock. Now, that's quite a big club in the area there. Um, it's a ground where they play regular minor counties cricket and a lot of the first team, I never played in the first team, had minor county cricketers in there from Suffolk, from yeah. Norfolk and elsewhere, a good, good standard. Yeah. So coming here is a little bit different because when I first started playing, what was then the Derbyshire County Cricket League had only six or seven divisions and that included the reserve mm. teams. Um, next season in 2019 it will have 19 divisions, um, that's how much is expanded yeah. in terms of the number of clubs and the number of teams that clubs have. At the time, um, Peter will remember, we used to have first and second 11s, most mm-hmm. clubs did. Now teams have thirds and fourths, and in some cases, fifth teams in those leagues. So cricket has expanded a great deal. Do you have, how many teams do you have here? Just two now. Right. Um, and then junior teams. And ju- well, yes, we, we have, have a number of Four clubs. juniors. Yeah. yeah. Four juniors. Uh, the junior setup has, has, has grown a great deal recently because of a lot of hard work by others. Um, we've struggled senior team wise. Um, I stopped playing in 2005 because of age and injuries 
Um, I was asked to come back in as chairman in 2015, which I did. But the first thing we had to do, because we had a meeting in this very room, was actually pull our second team out of the county league. We just simply did not yeah. have enough players. And it was a struggle. But again, due to a lot of hard work by various people, um, I don't include myself in that, by the way, but a lot of people, committee members and others, and new members of the club, yeah. we had re-established a second team last year. Prior to that, though, in uh, the early part of the 2000s, we, we actually extended to a third team. Uh, play, you know, we played right. games as well. Um, but maybe that was part of the problem. It was too much too soon. Yeah. yeah. But we're, we're, we're back on the road to recovery. Our first, to be, first team are, are playing at a really good standard. They, they missed out on promotion on the last day of last season. And we're beginning to attract better quality players again. Excellent. Um, what I'd like to do, because we, we talked about your accession to the Border League, which was in, remind me, 65. Oh, yeah, so, so what was the standard like? I'm, I'm looking at you two gentlemen, um, Dave and Clary. What was the standard of Border League cricket in the mid-1960s when you first started to play? Because presumably you'd gone from playing friendly yeah. cricket to, to much more competitive cricket, presumably? Well, friendly cricket's... Perhaps some ma some, fair, some matches were easy, and yeah. some matches, some teams were better than anything you played in the in. Right. So, the I think the overall competitiveness were a bit of an eye opener to some people. Yeah. I mean, I, I was a rugby player, so it didn't bother me. Yeah. But some people found it difficult. What sort of teams were in that, the league at that time then? Yeah. Well. The, the Derby team, Spondon and Alveston and Bolton were the, yeah. the two star teams. Yeah. Then you'd have your Rolls Royce teams. They were most, we, we, we had to travel most to yeah. the Derby side. Uh, do you remember, what do you remember about that time, Clay? Well, my head is actually off and Colliery. The, the, the teams that we used to play were far better than what we ever played in the league. Uh, and we used to go to places like Sheffield Collegiate. Skate Desk, Colville, players at Nottingham, Rowley at Nottingham. Yeah. It was all very high standard, that one. And what about you, Peter? What was your view of, of, of league cricket? Because presumably you'd only know league cricket. Is that yes. fair, fair from when you arrived? Yeah, in that I did flight? play some friendly cricket in the village where I lived yeah. in Westington. Uh, very basic, <laughs> very rural. <laughs> uh, in fact, we started that. It, it, it was a, a meadow, the field. <laughs> uh, and you remember it, Clary. I know, I play and rooms. <laughs> no pavilion, no changing facilities, so we had to put a marquee up every week right. to change in the marquee. And of course, you've got both teams changing. It was quite fun. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes, you say yeah. so. <laughs> quite fun in there. Um, so, yeah, uh, so that was the very start. That wasn't league cricket, but then. Uh, I started and I was invited to go and play with Street Lane at Ripley uh, and that was the start of my league cricket. What sort of players, because obviously there were some standout players mm. playing in mm. board league cricket, mm. who were the players either that played here or you played against that you, you've got recollections of? Played them? against? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, there were some very good players around in those days, uh, county players, and in fact uh, I know uh, when we played Langley Mill on one occasion uh, with Matlock, uh, and Dave will probably remember that, he was, uh, I'm not sure, he was probably captain at that time, but Fred Rumsey was yeah, really? playing yeah. for Langley yeah. Mill, right. and it was only two or three years after he'd finished and opening the bowling with England mm. that we played against him. He, was, he was rapid. You get any runs? I got one off him, <laughs> which is the best one I've ever scored. <laughs> yeah, um, he, he was good. Yeah. What, what I remember about Rumsey, I was, I was a front foot player, and he was a bit rapid. And he said to me, and I was running, but he says, I shall not bounce you, play your front foot. Really? Yes. And I thought, well, because he did. Yeah. <laughs> And how many, how many runs did you get, David? Oh, I can't remember that here, but... I Peter can remember his one. I, I can for a straight I can remember hitting for a straight four, and he said, good shot. And next yeah. one, I, I, 
at all. Yeah. <laughs> what sort of standard was Matlock at? I mean, I know we're talking variate, variances in from 1950 to your debut in the 80s, but what standard were Matlock playing at? The, the first team in the mid 80s um, when I came was in Division 2 of the Boys County League then, yeah. and it got promoted, I think, that year. Uh, into Division 1, so it went into oh. what was then the top division. Yeah. It's now Premier League, but then it was a top division. But then fairly quickly we dropped through the leagues down to, I think we what they used to call Division 4A. We got about three or four relegations. Four we went as low as 4B. So successive relegations, almost. So, but we still had a, a few good players, a chap, we would it'd be wrong not to mention him in the time I was here. Um, we talked about stalwarts, a gentleman called Ian Blackburn, who lives just across up the road. Uh, really good batsman, as good a cricket as I've ever seen or played with. Really? Um, not involved with the club anymore. He's an honorary life vice president, but a great contribution as a, yeah. as a player. And probably could have been as good as a standard uh, standard county uh, player. He certainly represented the, the county cricket league at a representative yeah. level. Um, and, yeah. and who were your biggest rivals? Who was the team that you you most liked to beat, or the one that oh, you didn't get on with? Dolly Day. Yeah. Even it? now, it still will be. Because we play them, ironically, they've got promoted next year, so we'll be playing them next year. But friendly yeah. rivalry or in, in, real rivalry? But in, the, in, the ca <laughs> in the county league, I always used to like playing Alverston Bone. Mm. Right. Because mm. they'd always got very good players, but they had a good social life after. What, who was playing for AMB at that time then? Dave? Gaskin. Arnie Gaskin, is Albert, that? Albert Mays. Yeah. Would Tony Pope have been playing that? Pope. Yeah. yeah, Pope was playing. Yeah. That was one of my guest appearances when when Alfred hadn't got a match and Dave got me to make the team up. And Les Bradbury was the star man in them days. Well, of course, Les played for Doris. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he was with us. Yeah. They had two, ball, uh, two bats, like, uh, well, you'll remember the names, it was Caulfield, one one. Yeah, uh, Gaskin and Schofield. They were about. They got up to about two hundred, and uh, I dropped both of them. <laughs> <laughs> off Les Bradbury. And, oh dear. What did he say to you? Was oh, that not repeated? I don't, really, not not repeat repeat I don't really know, but I dropped them both. Well, Les wouldn't have said anything. He just what well, Les first mark and bowled again. Yeah, maybe. Well, Les, Les actually <laughs> played for us in the mid eighties, and the year we got promoted back into Division Two, well, yeah. unfortunately, he decided then to call it a day. Right. Um, I think he realised then sort of his age and that, that the yeah. standard was probably that much and he had nothing to prove. So yeah, he got us up and then that was it basically. Mm. Mm. Well we're going to leave it there gentlemen. It's been fascinating listening to what you've got to say but I think we'll come back in a minute and listen to some more hopefully. Thank you.